to obey God. The Bible commands us, folks, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring into judgment every work with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's right, God's going to judge you for your lifestyle. That's what the Bible teaches. The way you live, the way that God is going to judge you. What seems to have happened is there seems to have been a, uh, a lapse in communication between God and man. Where man thinks he can just do whatever he wants to do, say whatever he wants to say, go wherever he wants to go, think whatever he wants to think, live however he wants to live, and he's still going to be in right standing with a holy, benevolent God. But I tell you this, that is error. Because Bible, the Bible teaches without holiness no man will see the Lord. The Bible says to obey is better than to sacrifice or to live and do what you want to do. As a matter of fact, the Bible also commands that all men everywhere are to repent because God has appointed a day in which he will judge the whole world in righteousness by the man Christ Jesus, in whom he hath ordained and given us full assurance and that he raised Jesus from the dead. That's right, Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross. That's right, the Jesus you read about in the Bible the Jesus that you mock and you scorn and you use as a cuss word, the Jesus that these uh, rap stars, these wannabe rhythm and blues stars make funny names about their albums about this Jesus that I preach to you was raised from the dead on the third day and over 500 witnesses testified Jesus Christ alive, risen from the dead after he was crucified, after he was entombed. That's right, Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus came out of the grave. Thank God. Thank God Jesus didn't stay dead. Thank God Jesus still isn't hanging on that cross. Hey, Catholics, come on, some of you are Catholic. You know Jesus is still hanging on the cross in the Catholic Church. That's why there's no power in the Catholic Church because Jesus is still dead hanging on a cross and you're dead religion. I'm telling you the Bible teaches on the third day the power of the Holy Spirit came into that tomb and Jesus rose up, threw off his grave clothes and walked out of that tomb. The stone was rolled away. This Jesus that I preach to you is not dead. He's not a myth. It's not an old story or a cool little Bible lesson. I'm telling you the Jesus I preach to you is alive and he sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven and he's going to judge the living and the dead. One day he's going to judge you, sir, ma'am. I'm telling you, you ain't ready. I'm telling you, you ain't ready. Well, you need to go out and do something about it. You need to go out and do something about it. Born and raised here, three brothers, three sisters. I was not raised in a Christian home. I did not believe in God, did not believe in Jesus Christ. I partied, I did everything that was wicked. I was a very selfish man and very greedy. And I was raised that way in a very wealthy home. I had everything I wanted. You know, I, I lived my life. And I had no thought of God. I did not feel bad having sex out of marriage. I thought it was fun. Hey, I didn't, I didn't feel bad smoking marijuana. I, it was good. Hey, I didn't feel bad lying to my mom and my dad, dishonoring them. I'm telling you, I lived for 21 years on this earth, and I did not feel bad. I was not convicted. I didn't think anything about doing drugs. I never read the Bible. I never went to church. I never heard a guy stand on the corner talk about Jesus. I never knew any of that. And I'm telling you, when I was 21 years old, somebody came up to me and told me about Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I said, who is he? I didn't even hear the name of Jesus. Born and raised here. I mean, this is my testimony. I was 21 years old and did not know the name of Jesus. I did not know one Bible verse. I did not know John 3, 16 that God so loved the world, no one ever witnessed to me. 
I never received a track. No one. All the way up to 21 years old. I'm telling you. Not even in school? Not even one. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, <clears throat> none of my family talked about Jesus. They didn't go to church. My mom would say that she was a Catholic, I found out when I got saved. <laughs> I didn't even know what a Catholic was. And I'm telling you, she would say the same prayer every night with my grandma. And it was, you know, our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I didn't even know what they were saying at eight years old, 10 years old. 14 years old, no one told me. And I'm telling you, when I was 21 years old, someone shared about Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, God gave me a revelation. A miracle took place. Faith came. I was blown away. I desired to get a Bible. I opened up the Bible, and I'm telling you, right then I was changed. I saw my sin, and I said, God, I've sinned against you. I know who I am, my identity, I'm your child. A revelation came. A revel I'm some super, and I can't even explain it. Something took place in my life, in my room, from one guy sharing his faith with me in a workout. I used to work out all the time. It, Personal trainer, I'm telling you. Welfare? No, I'm telling you what took place in my life. I'm 54 years old. Hey, when I was 21 years old, and I really am telling you guys, this is what happened in my life. And you watch this video. When God came into my life, Jesus Christ came into my life, I was born again. Something took place in my life, I was converted. Conversion, I became like a little child. I had this simple faith. I believed God in his word. I believed his promises. I believed his love. I believed his goodness. I seen who I was. There was meaning in my life because of God said, there is meaning in my life. I was changed by the power of God. And I'm telling you from that time on and out, 54 years old, what is that, 32 years of walking with God. I'm gonna tell you God has given me grace, favor. He has given me power. He has given me his goodness that has led me in righteousness doing what is right, doing what is good, doing what pleases Him. And I'm telling you, God, He will do that in you. In no respect to a person, what God has done in my life, He will do in your life. Amen. No respect to a person. And I'm telling you, I came in a place of faith. I saw my sin. I knew my rebellion. I knew my attitude. I knew I was a liar. Have you ever lied? Have you ever lied? I know. I know that's the problem. Your lies will send you to hell. And I'm concerned about your soul. I don't want you to go to hell. Does anybody care about you? Will anybody tell you about you have offended God? You have lied to God. But God is willing to forgive. That's the good news. He's merciful. I've obtained mercy. You can obtain mercy, ma'am. Ma'am, obtain mercy. I mean, we need to speak much about mercy. Amen. We got to speak much about it. Amen. Mercy. He's so merciful. Look how merciful God is. Amen. I deserve hell. Amen. I deserve to go to the lake of fire. I sinned against God. I disobeyed God. Amen. I rebelled against him. I turned my back on him. I sat on the throne of self. I had other gods. Jesus Christ was not Lord of my life. And then I came to repentance. I saw my sin and truth. Yes. I was convicted. My conscience was bothered. Yes. Oh, the weight of my sin crushed me. And then God was merciful, merciful. God was merciful and he has forgiven me. He'll be merciful to you and forgive you, cleanse you, change you. But you have to humble yourself and be born again, convert it. Be like a little child. Come to Christ in repentance, Amen. confession, Preach. turning, trusting, believing, obeying. Oh.